I'm Lynn Packer with Operation Underground Railroad video report number 18. During a live online webcast in April, OUR President Tim Ballard doubled down on his use of unproven, false, and outdated statistics to solicit donations. Ballard claimed to dispel myths and provide facts about the numbers of children in the United States and around the world being forced into commercial sex slavery and fall prey to pedophiles. Plus, in this report, OUR engages in war-torn Ukraine and Ballard's BBC interview. But first, some breaking news. Last June, I was the first to report the FBI was investigating Operation Underground Railroad. I can now report that according to multiple sources, but none with direct knowledge, say that the FBI has closed its investigation without any criminal charges. FBI and U.S. Attorney spokespersons responding to whether an investigation was closed or even opened, said they would neither confirm nor deny. Ballard's criminal defense attorney, James Melendris, and OUR attorney, Alessandra Serrano, both declined to confirm whether the FBI had closed its OUR investigation. Meanwhile, Davis County attorney, Troy Rawlings, will not confirm whether his criminal investigation, which had been going since August 2020, has also concluded. Also, this news update, Coco Berthman was charged with fraud on May 10th, was served by a summons to appear in court next month. I previously broke the story about Berthman's false claim to have been sex trafficked as a child by her mother. She is accused of a one-count violation of Utah's communications fraud statute, an alleged swindle involving just under $10,000. By the way, Berthman was charged with violating the same Utah law that Tim Ballard is suspected of violating while raising money for his Operation Underground Railroad nonprofit. Now to this report's first topic. In April, OUR President Tim Ballard hosted a live question and answer webcast titled Myth vs. Fact. During it, he defended the accuracy of his fundraising pitches. We want to give you clarity, he said. He did not take questions from his live audience. Rather, he formulated, asked, and answered his own questions. One of them, Ballard posed to himself, was about numbers. Numbers Ballard uses to claim that human trafficking is the world's fastest growing criminal enterprise. How do you know how many people are sold into this each year? Ballard said that question prompted him to think about a recent article that challenged the numbers he gives for children sold into sex slavery each year internationally and in the United States. When I read that question, I first thought of uh, an article that came out recently um, targeted OUR. Uh, I took it as a compliment because they said that we were the um, center of gravity in the, in, in the anti-trafficking movement. But the, the ignorant um, reporter uh, decided to make a deal about the numbers, right? What, what do the numbers look like? The numbers and what they look like are one reason OUR is under criminal investigation. Ballard uses big numbers to shock, sadden, or frighten audiences into donating tens of millions of dollars to his child sex slave rescue cause. Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings' investigators were looking into the truthfulness of Ballard's fundraising messaging. Understanding OUR's numbers depends on how child sex slavery is defined. Child sex trafficking, a subset of human trafficking, is legally defined as the act of recruiting, harboring, transporting a child for commercial sex, including prostitution and the production of child pornography. Commercial being a key word. Indeed, it's often called the commercial sex trade, with children as sex workers or child prostitutes or as OUR usually calls them, child sex slaves. It includes, but is not limited to, stranger danger, where a child is kidnapped, abducted, taken, or snatched into prostitution for money. 
Sometimes a family member acts as a pimp. Some child sex abuse is not trafficking. It's where children are sexually assaulted, raped, or otherwise exploited, most often not for money. There is no abduction, no selling into sex slavery. There is no pimp, no trafficker. Either there is involuntary forced sexual abuse by someone known to the child, could be incest like a father, a brother, could also be a neighbor, a priest, a soccer coach where grooming is involved. Or the minor becomes a sex worker voluntarily, selling themselves without a pimp who would make money. Ballard says his statistics, his facts about child sex slavery come from reputable sources. The, the, the truth is that the numbers are um, obtained by very credible institutions like the United States State Department or the United Nations, who spend a lot of time and money analyzing data and coming up with numbers. That's true. Ballard cites human trafficking numbers from the United Nations, United States Department of Justice, and the United States State Department, among other sources. A, a, general, a general overview of those numbers are about 27 million people in total that are enslaved today. That's more than ever before in the history of the world. Um, roughly about 10 million of those are sex slaves. The rest are slave labor. Um, Two million of those are children forced into commercial sex trade. But could numbers from supposed credible sources be wrong or misquoted or out of date? Are they fact or myth? 27 million enslaved worldwide, 10 million sex slaves, 2 million children forced into the commercial sex trade. Again, the importance of definitions. The article that drew Ballard's ire appeared on the Atlantic Magazine's website in December. It was titled, The Great Fake Child Sex Trafficking Epidemic by Caitlin Tiffany. The article did not mention the numbers you just heard Ballard rattle off. He would complain about that omission during his Q&A webcast. It contested two others, 300,000 and 800,000. Beginning with the 300,000 number that an OUR fundraising chapter cited. Upwards of 300,000 children are victims of sex trafficking in the United States every year. Ballard himself, on the other hand, has often said up to 100 or 200,000 children in the United States are in the commercial sex trade. It is a problem here. It is happening right here. By, by some estimates, up to 100 or 200,000 children in the United States who are in the commercial sex trade. Here's what The Atlantic reported. Of course, child sex trafficking does happen. Statistically, however, it is hard to get a handle on. The data are often misleading when they exist at all. Whatever the incidence, sex trafficking does not involve hundreds of thousands of American children. When today's activists talk about the problem of trafficking, knowing exactly what they're referring to can be difficult. The Atlantic article and Ballard in his rebuttal both discuss figures released by the nonprofit Polaris Project, based in Washington, D.C. Polaris was founded in 2002, a decade before OUR. It operates the U.S. National Human Trafficking Hotline, funded by the government, thus by taxpayers. Polaris compiles statistics based on tips called into the hotline. Here's an overview of the numbers OUR uses and those the Atlantic claims are more accurate. Ballard's, domestically about 100,000 to 200,000 children are in the commercial sex trade in the United States. The Atlantic's, 14,597 likely victims of sex trafficking of all ages in the United States. Ballard will refer to that number as 20 some odd thousand. Uh, this commentator uh, 
talked about, um, you know, the, the numbers that we get from, from these very organizations domestically is about 100 to 200,000 um, children who are in the commercial sex trade in the United States. And she combats that source uh, by saying that's not true because uh, Polaris Project, the, human, the anti-human trafficking hotline, only reported something like 20 some odd thousand reports in 2019, not 100,000, not 150,000. The Atlantic article said the United States National Human Trafficking Hotline has been operated by the anti-trafficking nonprofit Polaris Project and overseen and partially funded by the Department of Health and Human Services since 2007. In 2019, it recorded direct contacts with 14,597 likely victims of sex trafficking of all ages. Even that number includes adult sex workers, not just minors. Instead of referring to any credible study as a source for his 100 to 200,000 child sex workers in the United States, Ballard's defense is a deep sea fishing analogy which he says shows the ignorance of news outlets. So what's that like? That's like saying I went out deep sea fishing for uh, three days in the Pacific Ocean and I only caught, and there's five of us, and we only caught 50 fish. Huh. So there's not a hundred, there's not hundreds of thousands of fish in the Pacific Ocean, is there, JC? There's only, I mean, I caught 50, so what, maybe there's 80? I don't know, I only caught 50. This is the ignorance of our, of our news outlets, okay, of people claiming to be reporters. And what they're doing while, making, while trying to make a name for themselves off this movement of human trafficking, they're hurting people. If they, if they turn off someone who might have been instrumental in rescuing a kid, that's on you. What does Polaris now say about the numbers controversy? Its chief communications officer gave me a statement. The data that we hold from the National Human Trafficking Hotline is complex and is misunderstood or misused all the time. We do not believe accurate numbers exist for North America, which is where we focus. We are, of course, deeply concerned about the mis- and disinformation out there about human trafficking. Any definitive statement about the prevalence of human trafficking in North America should be taken with a grain of salt. There is no prevalence data, period. The Atlantic article then brings up an 800,000 number, saying this. There is a widely circulated number the OUR chapter publicized. 800,000 children go missing in the U.S. every year. The figure shows up on t-shirts. But it comes from a study conducted in 1999 by the Justice Department, and it's an estimate of the number of children who were reported missing over the period of a year for any reason, for any length of time. The majority were runaways, according to the Justice Department. The Atlantic missed more ways OUR uses the 800,000 number. OUR's use of 800,000 sometimes refers to the number of people trafficked across international borders, as Ballard and his OUR sidekick, Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes, testified in Washington, D.C. Trafficking women and children for sexual exploitation is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. About 2 million children are exploited every year in the global commercial sex trade. According to the U.S. State Department, 600,000 to 800,000 people are trafficked across international borders every year, of which 80% are female and half are children. Then there's OUR's even wilder use of 800,000. Matt Osborne, second in command, claimed it was not just people trafficked across borders worldwide, but more specifically children imported each year into the United States as sex slaves. The Atlantic article delved into the kidnapping issue, implying that OUR purposefully obfuscates the number of children actually kidnapped into prostitution. The story says OUR cites statistics that actually offer global estimates of all forms of labor trafficking. 
Or they mention outdated and hard to parse figures about the number of children who go missing in the United States every year, most of whom are never in any immediate danger. And then start talking about children who are abducted by strangers and sold into sex slavery. Quoting Justice Department statistics, the 1999 estimate for non-family abductions reported to authorities was 12,100, which includes stereotypical kidnappings. A survey sent to law enforcement agencies found that an estimated 115 of the non-family abducted children were victims of stereotypical kidnapping. The Justice Department repeated the study in 2013 and found that reports of missing children had significantly decreased. Ballard, in his live Fact vs. Myth webcast, accused the Atlantic reporter of dishonestly defining and limiting child sex trafficking to just those who were kidnapped off the street, where no one knew what happened to the missing child, sort of like the milk carton kids of the 1980s. And so she decided to define human trafficking very limited. We've talked about earlier, like the hard, the white van, the kidnappings, the cold cases, that, the cold kidnapping. Let's define it like that, and then I can make fun of people like OUR who are saying that there's, you know, two million children in the commercial sex trade. But it's Ballard himself who continually raises the specter of kidnappings. Like this poster, we exist to free child sex slaves or our job is to rescue children who have been kidnapped, who have been trafficked. It's what OUR's child rescue was supposed to have been about. It's when a child or a person, we focus on children, but it's, it's, a, it's a child who's, who's, who's taken and enslaved. Kidnapped? Kidnapped. And sold by their own parents sometimes? Sometimes or? their own parents, sometimes a, a different person who gets a hold of them. Um, but it's, it's basically human bondage. I deal every day with lost children. I see how easily they get snatched by evil people, and it is the most miserable thing on earth. I walked into those dens where they kidnapped people, children, and forced them into slave labor or forced them into things much worse than that. We travel all over the world. Our job is to rescue people, children, who have been kidnapped, who are being trafficked. This is the biggest problem plaguing the earth. I mean, is there anything worse than children being, being taken and trafficked? But there's one thing left. Children shouldn't be kidnapped. Children shouldn't be raped. Children shouldn't be exploited. That's it. That's all we got left. Ballard went on a Spiro Agnew-style offensive against the Atlantic reporter, accusing her reporting of putting children's lives at risk. And further, without proof, accusing media outlets of reporting that pedophilia is normal. Uh, so shame on you, people who are trying to make a thing of these numbers and, try and, and lessen the chance of a woman or child from being, from being rescued. Um, it's sick and um, it's interesting, most of those outlets, by the way, are the ones that are reporting on this, also have parallel reporting about how pedophilia is normal. and how Let's not stigmatize people who want to have sex with our children. It's, 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 it's a movement we're battling and it's, it's disgusting. Finally, Ballard accused the Atlantic of leaving out his actual numbers about child sex slavery. You know, the 27 million enslaved worldwide, 10 million sex slaves, 2 million children forced into the commercial sex trade. So uh, this particular article that I'm referring to decided to leave all that out because that would have ruined her story. Again, the numbers Ballard says were left out. Ballard is correct. The Atlantic article did not deal with those figures. But Ballard may be lucky it didn't. My reporting did go into those numbers in great detail in 2015, seven years ago, and again in 2020. His key sex trafficking numbers have not changed in seven or more years. 
Ten million are commercial sex slaves worldwide. Ten million sex slaves. Two million children trapped as sex slaves. Again, two million. Thirty-two billion a year global industry. Still, thirty-two billion a year. Fastest growing criminal enterprise. It's still growing. Even if the numbers and claims were accurate seven years ago, they would still not be accurate today. But they were not even accurate then, as I reported in 2015. My 33-page report was published online in 2015. It was about Sean Reyes and the child sex slave rescue industry. There was a section in it about Tim Ballard's hyping of OUR and about his numbers game. It went through his broken record repetition of numbers. I looked at, for example, a State Department trafficking report. That document did not support Ballard's numbers. As I reported, the U.S. State Department's 2014 Trafficking in Persons report warns news reporters about what it calls the numbers game, the same game it once played. Reporters often lead with numbers, the report says, but reliable statistics related to human trafficking are difficult to find. That's one of Ballard's so-called legitimate sources. Came out the year OUR was formed, and he certainly would have read it. Still, seven years ago, I quoted Tom Gillen, a law enforcement human trafficking trainer. He told me, don't get caught up in the numbers. I hate those approximate numbers because you can make up anything you want. And the reason that they use those numbers, in my opinion, is as a marketing tool to get people to give to their cause. There are a lot of nonprofit organizations that are popping up, he said. They are coming out of the woodwork, raising money, saying that they are rescuing people and doing this or doing that. And what we're finding out is that they're not really doing a whole lot of anything. I asked Gillen about the video some charities, including OUR, make of dramatic rescues. He said, those are the things that bother me. There have been quite a few of those videos that organizations produce, and then they use those to even make more money. I told Gillen that Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes went on one of OUR's missions and appeared in a promotional video. Wow, that's scary, he responded. More than a year and a half ago, I tackled OUR's numbers again in a YouTube video report titled Tim Ballard and Ego Run Amok. I reported on OUR's unproven statements, which included statistics. I focused on a KUTV news story that cited one of Ballard's claimed reliable sources. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime reports there are more than 20 million people currently enslaved in human trafficking worldwide, Two million of them being children. So there they are, the 20 million and two million figures, what OUR and KUTV say are in the UN report. The UN report actually says, in 2016, a peak of more than 24,000 detected victims was recorded. There is no mention of 20 million currently enslaved or two million of them being children. It's 24,000 versus 20 million. Oh, you are inflated the number more than 800 times. What about UN stats? I exchanged phone calls and emails with the UN's research expert on trafficking in persons, Fabrizio Sorica in Vienna, Austria. He said, many things of what you ask clarifications for are indeed not accurate information that keep on being reiterated. He said there is not a global estimate on the number of victims of trafficking in persons. Sarika went on to say, the global estimates you will see are normally referring to the concept of modern day slavery. 
That is a vague term that may include a variety of different phenomena, but is not trafficking in persons as defined by the United Nations. We never make reference to such global estimates. If someone is misquoting us, that is another matter. As far as the situation in the USA, I don't think there is a country estimate. The 20.9 million is an estimate of the International Labor Organization, that's part of the United Nations, and refers to victims of forced labor, not victims of trafficking in persons. I am not familiar with 2 million CSE, but maybe this is part of the ILO estimates. Nevertheless, I think they withdrew this figure. OUR's Atlantic article bashing goes on. Ballard is not the only OUR officer who attacked the Atlantic article. Alessandra Serrano, who was hired after working as a federal prosecutor, joined the assault in a YouTube video separate from Ballard's fact and myth Q&A. So the article, The Great Fake Child Sex Trafficking Epidemic, when I read the title, it was completely shocked. The idea that this crime doesn't exist. There are thousands of victims and survivors who would absolutely disagree. Serrano falsely portrays the article as suggesting this crime does not exist. The Atlantic article did not even hint that child sexual crimes do not exist. Here's what it said. Of course child sex trafficking does happen. And it is horrible. The crime is a serious concern of human rights organizations and of governments all over the world. Statistically, however, it is hard to get a handle on. The data are often misleading when they exist at all. After Serrano took her swipe at the Atlantic article, Ballard took another swing during a May 9th Stephen Scoggins podcast. Unfortunately, there was this horrible piece that came out in the Atlantic uh, about a month ago called The Great Fake Child Sex Epidemic. Um, and my foundation and me personally, we're, we're one of the main targets of the, the attack. It's because you're doing and, light work. You're doing God's and, work. That's and fine. shame on that person. Yeah. Shame on there. Th whoever doesn't get rescued because they believed what she wrote. Mm -hmm. That's on her forever. Yeah. yeah. And what she did was decided not to answer the question that you just asked me. How are traffickers getting these kids? So yeah. she's trying to make a point in, in, in pushing an agenda, mm -hmm. um, probably because I was a Trump appointee, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. I got to hate him because I have a picture with him and Trump, yeah. so I can say whatever I want now. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it was the most ridiculous, ignoring all the research, right? And decided to define what trafficking is to like a case like an Elizabeth Smart type case, mm -hmm. which is horrifying, yeah. but doesn't happen as often, right? Yeah. Of someone going into your house and kidnapping you and ripping you out of your house. And, and that's, you know, so she decided to limit trafficking to something like that. I, I, I think the UN and I think the state department are credible. Yeah. So I'm going to, I will, I will continue to repeat those numbers. Yeah. Turning next to the Utah statute that governs representations made to solicit money, material omissions is a factor. The law applies to any person who has devised any scheme or artifice to defraud another or to obtain from another money by means of false or fraudulent representations or material omissions. Is it possible Ballard omitted material information? For example, would potential donors want to know if Ballard, besides providing false, unproven, or dated numbers, but he also omitted information that could impact their decision to donate. What if, for example, it were a fact that most child adolescent, that is under 18, sex workers are not trafficked, that is not managed by a pimp who sells their services? Question, what percentage of child sex workers are controlled by pimps? Are there any studies, any facts about that? Yes. And it is data Ballard does not provide. Fact. Studies show most child prostitutes who engage in so-called survival sex, often homeless, runaway, or impoverished children, usually have no pimps. One study concluded, The view of adolescent prostitution as primarily driven by pimp exploiters 
and other sex traffickers may be wrong. That view was challenged by a 2008 study by the NYC Social Networks Research Group. That study found that only 10% reported having pimps. A 2012 study done in Atlantic City, New Jersey, found the percentage of adolescents who had pimps to be only 14%, and that even those relationships were typically far more complex than has been reported by social service providers, not-for-profits, and much of the news media. Another example, this 2016 study by the Center for Court Innovation. It's had similar to estimates in earlier studies. Our study found that 15% of youth in the sex trade were working with a pimp, a person who controls their involvement in the market by the use of force, fraud, or coercion. A precise population estimate is impossible because of the flaws in officially collected data. One advocate told researchers, law enforcement mistakenly thinks all girls have pimps. And one police officer said that the goal is to rescue victims, prosecute pimps. One author wrote about another study. She wrote, in a study of a thousand youths engaged in survival sex across six cities in the United States conducted by John Jay College in 2013, 97% of those surveyed reported that they did not have pimps or traffickers forcing them into the sex trade, but instead relied on other young people to teach them how to find clients. She said the dominant narrative of the evil trafficker preying on vulnerable young women serves to distract from state-sanctioned conditions of poverty that lead young people into the sex trade. Here's another fact that Ballard leaves out. Many child sex workers may not want to be rescued. It's an observation that comes from one of his own officers. Alessandra Serrano, OUR's chief legal officer of international operations, while still an assistant U.S. attorney, along with FBI agent James Veltry, were interviewed for an ABA Journal article on sex trafficking. The article said, these girls, often runaways or foster children, don't have strong support systems at home. Their handlers keep the money and maintain control through threats and coercion. Yet, the article went on, when the FBI shows up after a sting and is prepared to rescue trafficked victims, agents are met with hostility. Both Serrano and Veltri said they've never encountered a victim eager to be rescued. Rather, these victims are hostile and unwilling to accept help. Perhaps none of OUR's unproven claims is made more often than fastest growing, as in fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. How many times has Ballard made the claim? Hundreds? Thousands? The highest child rape consumption country in the world is right here in the United States. This is the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. And there's millions of kids stuck in it and it's not going away. Dozens of reporters have passed along his claim as fact. Other OUR pitch men use the catchphrase or those similar. And let me tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, trafficking is at its greatest number in the history of all the world. Depending on the agency, International Labor Organization says 21 million modern-day slaves. Global Slavery Index says 46 million. It really doesn't matter exactly how many the numbers are because we have never seen trafficking in the numbers that we see today. In fact, it is growing at a record pace. Right now, human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise internationally. It is the second most lucrative, it's already leapfrogged, arms dealing and counterfeiting. It trails only drug trafficking, and in reality, we don't know. It may have already surpassed that, but you can set a little girl or boy time and time again, hundreds of times, thousands of times. I testified with one young lady who said she was trafficked out to 40,000 different men. Human trafficking as a whole is either the second or third largest illicit criminal industry in the world behind drug trafficking and firearms trafficking. That's a fact. 
Is it a fact? Where is the study? Where is the research? Here are the facts. The fastest growing claim goes back, not years, but decades, and keeps getting recycled. It goes back to at least the 1930s, when FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover declared war on white slavery and the white slave traffic, with headlines like this, White slavery is fastest growing crime, G-men find. White slavery is fastest growing crime in the United States. And Hoover said, Impressment of girls into white slavery is on the increase. The New York Daily News opposed Hoover's anti-white slavery campaign. The paper decried G-men's raids on brothels. It wrote, The white slavery term is generally a misnomer. Practically all prostitutes are voluntary. They are not chained. They are not, save in rare instances, forced to sell their bodies by threats or intimidation, and consequently are not white slaves. The FBI's anti-white slavery crackdown in the 1930s was a continuation of earlier campaigns driven by sexual purity organizations of the 1910s, like the Mother Police, who engaged in sloganeering with catchphrases like, Today it is white slavery instead of black slavery. White slave gangs and slavers transport girls. Parents should warn children of the terrible evil. And white slavery is one of the greatest evils of the present day. Researchers refer to the Crusades of the era as the white slavery panic or hysteria that was reinforced by novels and books like In the Grip of the White Slave Trader or Fighting the Traffic in Young Girls. White slavery was a sensitive issue among Mormons in the 1910s when newspapers linked polygamy with trafficking in women, with headlines like, Polygamy like white slavery, says son of plural wife. And there were sensational silent films about polygamy, like A Mormon Maid, released in 1917. Researchers document the link between the anti-white slavery campaigns in the late 1800s and early 1900s to the anti-trafficking in women and girl campaigns re-emerging in the 1980s. One researcher wrote, Trafficking in women is the retelling of the myth of white slavery in a modern form, a new moral panic often whipped up by social purity reformers. And so the fastest growing sloganeering reemerges in the 1990s, two decades before Tim Ballard uses it to stir up an anti child sex trafficking frenzy. Back then, it was one of the fastest growing criminal enterprises in the world, not the fastest. And the slogan Ballard would later copy was Unlike cocaine, girls and women can be resold and resold. By the end of the 1990s, the State Department made trafficking in women and girls a point of emphasis. The UN warned it was on the rise, and it is still one of the fastest growing criminal enterprises in the world. By the 2000s, one of the fastest, which was never proven, became the fastest, still before OUR adopted the slogan. Here are a couple of examples among many. Polaris has stopped claiming fastest growing. In 2004, modern day slavery is the fastest growing criminal industry in the world, says Derek Ellerman, co-executive director of DC-based Polaris Project to a congressional subcommittee. But today, I think, I hope, it has been quite some time since we have said anything like the fastest growing criminal enterprise. That is not language we have used since I've been here, certainly because we are trying to be more precise and less alarmist than is sometimes the case in the human trafficking field. Journalism students are often taught to beware of superlatives and to avoid using them in news writing. 
Plus, fact check any quotes from news sources who use them. Typical instruction. When superlatives are claimed, journalists should always verify the information or qualify it to make it clear to readers it is what the source says. Sources should also be pushed to explain why they are sure of the claim. But PR students are taught, put superlatives in press releases so journalists will notice them. Reporters love extremes or superlatives. The first, the last, the best, the worst, the biggest, the smallest. If your story contains one, highlighting it will usually make it more newsworthy. Unfortunately, some reporters do love superlatives and pass them on as fact. Without any fact-checking, reporters took OUR's bait and hyped their stories. Here are just a few of them. Not to miss an opportunity to fundraise, Tim Ballard visited Ukraine a few days after his fact-myth Q&A. The only Ukraine photo Ballard posted was not of him rescuing children, but of him praying in a Greek Catholic church in Lviv. He did not venture to what he called the war-torn part of Ukraine, but went to the city near the Polish border, away from ground fighting. He urged his followers to continue praying. Ballard claims OUR is engaged in the most dangerous parts of the war zone. Thousands and thousands of children who are displaced, who are vulnerable, not only vulnerable to the invaders, uh, but also in vo vulnerable to human traffickers. We have our own operators working as well uh, on the ground. And what we are doing together is uh, working with the Ukrainian government. They've given us lists of children, orphans, and, and others who are vulnerable, who are unprotected. And we are going in and extracting those uh, children from the most war-torn places in Ukraine and taking them to places that are safer. Ukraine not only drew OUR, but also dozens of other anti-sex trafficking organizations, especially to Poland, where many refugees cross the border. Utah's Deseret News sent a reporter to the Polish border town Medica, which an article said was flooded by altruistic volunteers, said it's a hub for human trafficking with signs plastered around the gates warning refugees to not get into a car with strangers. Reports of human trafficking have long plagued Medica and the surrounding refugee camps. At a grocery store turned refugee center just 10 miles away, please stop every vehicle that leaves the parking lot. Reports of a suspected pedophile working for one of the NGOs had many in Medica on edge. The press quoted anti-child sex trafficking groups without fact-checking. For example, this Guardian headline. Volunteers patrol Polish border to fill what they say is a dangerous gap in protection for vulnerable refugees. Women and child refugees fleeing the war in Ukraine to Poland are being targeted by suspected pimps and sex traffickers operating alone and in gangs, according to charities working on the border. There had also been teams of people working together to try to lure women into unidentified cars. There had been reports from aid groups of women disappearing. MSNBC interviewed an anti-child sex trafficking spokesperson who sounded an alarm. MSNBC moderator Stephanie Rule was told, Ukrainian women and children are particularly valued in the sex trafficking market. Ukrainian women are white, considered to be very beautiful, and children are a lucrative item. There have been reports of buses of children disappearing. You know, Ukrainian women who are white, um, considered to be very beautiful as well as children are a lucrative item and you have predators who are scheming and who are meeting them with offers of help taking away their passports um, and then tra trafficking them onwards to uh, fill the the different spots and demands of the sex industry around the world 
There have been reports of uh, buses of children disappearing. And then from the accounts I've been hearing on the ground from different NGOs and government officials, this is actually happening. On the other hand, Microsoft News reported from the Ukrainian-Romanian border. Madalina Turza, Romania's humanitarian assistance coordinator, addressing human trafficking, said she's confident the government's support for refugees will prevent Ukrainians, mostly women and children, from being manipulated into the sex trade. At the border, she said, police were trained to spot signs of trafficking and ensure that children were arriving with adults who actually had an established connection to them. Turza said no instances of trafficking were detected. MSN interviewed the founder of Romania's only shelter for sex-trafficked women. Iana Mate runs the anti-trafficking organization Reaching Out Romania. In fact, Operation Underground Railroad recently organized volunteer workers to help Mate remodel her homes for abused women. Mate told MSN News, There were no confirmed reports of trafficking victims, and she critiqued stories in international media suggesting that traffickers were prowling for victims at the border itself, saying it was for some nonprofits a shameful way to fundraise. Ballard tweeted that he did an interview on his way home from Ukraine. He wrote, En route home from Ukraine, I was invited to stop in London to report our operations to the BBC. Stay tuned for more on this. So far, Ballard has provided no proof, no video of his operatives rescuing children from Ukraine's most war-torn places. So far, the BBC appears to have not yet broadcast its Ballard interview. Meanwhile, both OUR's involvement in Ukraine and Ballard's BBC visit have drawn the wrath of his QAnon supporters. Ballard stumbled into Ukraine and BBC buzzsaws. OUR's right-wing extremist fringe supports Russia in the Ukraine war because they believe Ukraine is the money laundering and child sex trafficking capital of the world. That Putin has made it an agenda to clean out the country of the organ and human trafficking criminals. Believes that the BBC is owned by the satanic deep state that a pedophile ring operates within the broadcast headquarters, and that a statue at the entrance is a pedophile icon. OUR's extremist supporters reacted to Ballard's Ukraine mission. I've read multiple sources that over 35,000 children were rescued from underground child trafficking rings during this war. Ukraine has the largest concentration of underground tunnel systems in the world, I hear. They would have to acknowledge the trafficking, pedophilia, and corruption in Ukraine. The world has painted Ukraine as an innocent country, a damsel in distress. Nothing could be further from the actual truth. OUR's fringe supporters reacted to Ballard's BBC interview. They commented, the BBC is the propaganda machine of the British government who's heavily involved in this war and have been manipulating public opinion in favor of more war. The Ukrainian government, like most governments, is corrupt to the core. Please don't believe anything the BBC says. Tim, the BBC protected Jimmy Savile, the UK's most notorious pedophile. They knew for many years what he was doing to children, they turned a blind eye. The BBC is a satanic, lying propaganda machine. Tim, don't be fooled. Did you spot the pedophile statue outside the building? The British Broadcasting Corporation, the national broadcaster of the United Kingdom, headquartered at Broadcasting House in London, is the world's oldest national broadcaster funded principally by annual television license fees charged to all British households. The BBC may have well painted a target on its back, inviting critics to castigate it.
There is, in fact, a statue at the entrance of BBC headquarters in London, sculpted by Eric Gill, who died in 1940. He was later exposed as a pedophile who sexually abused his two daughters and his dog. The sculpture represents Prospero and a naked boy, Ariel, from Shakespeare's The Tempest. BBC mega TV star Jimmy Savile, who hobnobbed with Britain's rich and famous, used his celebrity to sexually abuse young women and children in hospitals, schools, care homes, and his television dressing room for as long as four decades. His pedophile crimes were covered up. He died in 2011, a year before the police identified him as a prolific sexual predator. BBC executives subsequently suppressed their journalists' attempts to expose his crimes. Given Ballard's mission to combat pedophilia, it seems odd he ever went near the BBC. An ounce of prevention may be worth a pound of cure, especially if the pound of cure, raid and rescue schemes, is not working. Here are some possible ounces of prevention. Mandatory age-appropriate sex education beginning in grade school. Legalized adult prostitution nationwide, not merely a few counties in Nevada. Universal health care with a greatly expanded mental health component to include improving how doctors diagnose and treat pedophilia and other sexual disorders. Keep abortion legal among other reasons to help reduce poverty, and better government and NGO programs to improve economic conditions for poor families. That's the end. Thanks for watching.